So, all right. So if you missed it today, it's a snow day, and you missed a quiz, and there's no makeups. No, I'm kidding. I was trying to mess with people watching the video. We screwed it up. But that's okay. Oh, it only works once. All right, we're going to keep going now. All right. So that means the quiz is going to be tomorrow or tomorrow's Thursday, Thursday or Friday. All right, so we did our second graph. Oh, wow. That's calculus three. I know, this doesn't look far off from what we're doing, does it? No. See, look, calculus three is not bad. All right, that's why it wasn't matching my notes in the book. All right, so we got our Pythagorean identity right here with sine and cosine. All right, so next up after this identity, the, all the other Pythagorean identities are based directly off this Pythagorean identity. So we're going to begin with this. And what we're going to do is divide by, and we'll divide by cosine squared first. Is that right? Yeah. So we're going to begin with this, and we're going to, now I don't like to divide, so we're going to multiply by 1 over cos squared theta. And of course, we multiply in algebra both sides. So there's really three terms that we have to multiply into 1, 2, and 3. There's three terms, or two terms on the left side of the equation, and just one on the right. So we're going to multiply basically three things by 1 over cos squared. So cos squared divided by cos squared is our first term plus sine squared theta over sine oh, cos squared theta. equals 1 over cos squared theta. All right, I did briefly talk about the notation yesterday with squaring, or really any power, squared, cubed, fourth power. The exponent appears in a weird place. It appears right next to the function. So just to warn you, overall, one of the reasons I don't like this, and this is, this is the way it should be, not the way it is, Not it, the way notation should be. Don't need to use pronouns when you know what you're talking about. You don't need to use pronouns when you don't know what you're talking about. The way notation should be. Normally, if you take x and you f it twice, you apply the function f, and then you apply f again, this is generally what would be considered f squared of x, like do the function f twice. So that's the way notation should be. Unfortunately, trig notation, trig notation follows this convention. Uh, I mean, our functions are sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant, but I'm just going to use the letter f just to represent any of them right now. If you square it, we would normally write this as take f of x and then square that. But in trig notation, this is written as f squared of x, like this. So that's where it's a little confusing. So generally, as a mathematician, when I think of squaring a function, I think of doing the function twice, like f and then f again. But this is not the way it is. So I'm going to cross that out in trig. So that's not the way it is. Um, the way trig notation actually works is what I wrote down there at the bottom. So it's a little bit strange. Uh, unfortunately, people have been doing it for well over 100 years, and it's not going to change anytime soon. All right. 
cos squared over cos squared, cos squared over cos squared, what does that reduce to? That's one. So that's easy to see. You don't need no trig to see same thing over same thing as one. So that's easy. Now over here, sine squared over cos squared, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it as sine theta squared. I'm going to use the notation we should be using, although you're not going to see it in your book or really anywhere else. And I'm going to do the same thing cos theta square that. So I'm using notation that really makes more sense right here. So that when I do the algebra, the algebra will make a lot more sense. What can I do with the, uh, so one is as simple as it gets. That second term, sine theta squared divided by cos theta squared. What can I do with these square powers? If you want a very simple example, think of uh, maybe two 2 squared over 3 squared. There's a way to rewrite that. I can write it as 2 thirds whole thing squared. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, I'm just doing the baby steps to get there. But yes, that's where we're going. So I'm going to write this as just sine over cosine, sine theta over cos theta, and then square that whole fraction. And I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. We have 1 over cos theta whole thing squared, and you might say, oh, well, the one's not squared, but one is the only number that squared, well, zero squares to itself also, but one squares to itself. So I could go ahead, if I wanted to, and just write one squared in that line before. <clears throat> All right, and now, so that's unrelated. Let me erase that. All those numbers right there. That's not, that was, Hopefully you definitely knew that. All right, sine over cosine is tangent. And I'm going to write tan theta squared using good notation. What is 1 over cosine? There's an identity. Secant. So that's our secant right there. We got secant theta squared. And now I'm just going to rewrite with bad notation so it will match what you see on your book and on the internet. So this is tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. And when you actually pronounce them, so this box right here is what you need to memorize. 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Actually, let me write it as tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, because that's, that's the order it's written in your book. Can we have it in the normal way? That makes sense? Yeah. I, I will accept either notation, for sure. So this, I believe, is the version that's in your textbook in a box somewhere. Tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. What's that? Uh, well, we, so we started with our Pythagorean identity that was true on the unit circle. And for any. Uh, theta, and then we just did a bunch of algebra. It's, so this cos squared plus sine squared equals 1 no matter what theta is. So it's true for all thetas. So we did some algebra here, so all these things are equal, or all these equations are the same. And what we got to is a, an equation that's always true, it just involves tangents and secants instead of sines and cosines. Um, now notice it is not tangent squared plus secant squared equals 1. That is not what we got. I could get tangent squared and secant squared on the same side if I wanted to. Tan squared theta minus sec squared theta equals negative 1. That would be one way to uh, rewrite it with the trig functions on one side. I can multiply by negative 1 and have positive 1 instead. Uh, but the version that we're going to use is right here inside the box. So this is what we call an identity, which is true for every single theta value. Now we're going to see relatively soon tangent and secant. There's certain thetas that you'd be divided by 0. So the good news is if tangent is undefined, so you pick a theta, uh, you're undefined. I think a pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is where your x coordinate would be 0. So wherever the left side's undefined, the right side's also undefined. So they're still both the same. They'll be undefined, but they'll be both undefined, the same theta value. So you can really say they're equal 
equal for all theta values, even the ones that are undefined. They'll both be undefined. And undefined plus one is undefined. If you don't know what it is and you add one to it, it doesn't give you more information. You still don't know. All right, so there is the first one. Now we're going to go back and begin with the same thing. What do you think I'm going to do to this uh, this time around, this equation? What could I multiply by that would be similar but not exactly the same? One over sine squared. There we go. One over sine squared theta. So now you can use your algebra skills and turn this into, you should get down to, I'll just write dot, 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 you should get down to cosecants and cotangents. So you should have some cotangent and cosecants. So you're not going to have tangents and secants, you're going to have cotangents, cosecants. So go ahead, take a minute, and it would be almost the exact same steps we just did. You don't have to show as many steps though. I showed more steps than you need to show. So you could probably do this in about two steps, maybe three steps, and you're going to get to hopefully cotangent squared plus one equals cosecant squared. So any questions getting down over there? I've showed what I think are probably the, a reasonable number of steps to get there. I don't think we need five steps to get there this time. I only did five steps to show you how the uh, exponential notation works. So I'm not going to be that careful in the future. I just wanted to go super careful the first time. All right, let's put them all inside of one box. So here's our memorized box. Cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. We add a tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. And our last one. Cotangent squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. All right, so it's all three in one box. So this looks like it might be difficult to memorize, especially if you're not good at memorizing. So here is a good way for, uh, get, if you remember the second, how do you get to the third? So we're going to co the second equation to get the third. So what do I mean co? So the first equation, or the second equation is tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So when I say co it, tangent, just put co in front of it. Cotangent. Don't co one, one just right there. And then it turns secant squared into cosecant squared. So if you can fit the first two into your brain, you just have to co the tangent secant equation, and you get cotangent cosecant. So you really only need to remember two, uh, the first two. <clears throat> so now we're going to get to some examples. So these are called the uh, basic trig identities right here, the first 
I think we had six or so at the very beginning. These five basic identities, and then our Pythagorean identities down here. These are overall the basic or the fundamental identities. So we're going to do some examples. Find the exact value. So do you know anything about the uh, pi over 12 angle? Any types of sine values of pi over 12? Is that one of the angles we used? We got pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. We got no pi over 12s, though. So all that is not going to help us here. So this problem comes from this section. So obviously, it's going to use some things we learned in this section. 1 over secant. Let's think about 1 over secant, and maybe there's an identity for that. I don't think the secant squared tangent squared equation is going to help us much there. So 1 over secant. So we look at secant equals 1 over cosine. So I could reciprocate both sides of this equation. 1 over secant theta equals cos theta. If you don't like to uh, reciprocate your equation, take the reciprocal of both sides, you could multiply by cosine and then divide by secant, and you get right the same equation. All right, so 1 over secant is cosine. So we're going to use this identity I just wrote down. 1 over secant is cosine. Down here, 1 over secant. This is 1 over secant squared, so this is going to be cosine squared pi over 12. Oh, sine squared pi over 12 plus cosine squared pi over 12. There's another identity we can use here. What identity can we use? That one? Let's use that one. All right. As long as theta, as long as it's the same angle, it could be an ugly angle. Pi over 12, don't know too much about that angle. But I do see that it's sine squared plus cosine squared, and I know that equals 1 for any theta value. So there we go. It's exactly equal to 1. And that's the answer. That's the answer. Ah, so we have just enough time to talk about tangent negative, negative pi over 3. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yep. Uh, Oh. Oh. But if you want to share the rest of the class. Sure. Oh, man. Ah, so it fits right in here. I'll just call it problem four. How about that? Pretty much just like all these ones we were doing right here. So it'll fit in nicely. Oh. Hey, I'm just going to refer you to problem two right here. Here we did sine negative pi over three. Same angle. So where are we in the unit circle? This is what you need right here. Here's negative pi over 3. And what we need to do is figure out, you know, we're pi over 3 away from the x-axis. So I'm going to look at pi over 3 in the standard position in quadrant 1. So we have 1 half square root of 3 over 2. And then we bring that down to uh, xy in the fourth quadrant. We make y negative. So I'll take that out. So we make y negative, so we get the negative square root of 3 over 2. What, uh, what is cotangent in terms of x's and y's? Yeah, x over y. It'll be, yeah, x over y is cotangent. So if we had, oh, what's the eraser? Cot uh, negative pi over 3. I recommend if there's a negative, especially use parentheses. You don't have to use parentheses all the time, but especially if there's a negative, use parentheses. It'll be uh, x over y 
and that is x is 1 half, y is negative square root 3 over 2. And you definitely want to simplify this. It's very easy to do. Reciprocal of the denominator. Twos cancel, and we get negative 1 over square root 3. And that's our uh, cotangent, negative pi over 3. So we'll see uh, this blue angle, we're going to call it a reference angle very soon, and I'll talk about exactly how to find those. But you should be, at this point, you should have some intuition building up about how to get them. It's basically the shortest way to the x-axis. So wherever it is, it's not always clockwise or counterclockwise, could go, could go either way. Um, you know, if you're in quadrant, th if you're in quadrant four, your reference angle will, will be, actually, put that the wrong way. If you're in quadrant three, your reference angle would look like this. If you have a quadrant two angle, your reference angle will look like that. Uh, quadrant one, your reference angle is the angle you're working with anyways. So there's really no reason to use reference angle quadrant one. Uh, in quadrant four, we just did that reference angle right there. So reference angle is one of the, oops, one of the things that is easier to use your intuition than it is for me to write out some huge formula about if you're in this quadrant, it's this thing. If you're in this quadrant, it's the other thing because it's going to look very different depending on what quadrant you're in. Sometimes you're going to take, you're going to have to take uh, your angle and either add pi or subtract, or add pi. do you like pi minus your angle or negative pi plus your angle and it's a little bit tricky to write those out. Okay, so this is the end of class and we have a quiz either tomorrow or Friday. So I didn't finish a section today. So I can't, on Friday, I can't give you a quiz on um, six, what's the identity? No, it's not chapter six. Oh my gosh. We're in 10-3, yeah. So I can't give you a 10-3 quiz for Friday. We're not done with it. So most likely 10-2 tomorrow. 10-2. And 10-1. You, you always have to know everything before it as well.